The crew of Polaris Dawn brought me along today as they retraced the steps that led up to their historic mission, riding to the launch pad. Oh man, it's good to be back. An elevator ride to a top floor unlike any other and climbing the steps of the launch tower. Jared Isaacman is the commander of the all civilian crew. What is it like emotionally to stand here where your most recent mission departed from? This is uh this is a very emotional experience. It's an intense experience. It all began here and to be back at it is, um, yeah, it's, it's very special. They had an ambitious agenda, raising money for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital while conducting 40 research experiments and testing new spacesuits in the first all civilian spacewalk. When we open that hatch, uh, I'd say it was uh, like sensory overload because it's not just the visual stimulus of seeing Earth right in, in front of you. There are pressure changes, there are big temperature transients, it gets, gets colder. Only Isaacman and SpaceX engineer Sarah Gillis ventured outside the hatch, but pilot Scott Petit says they were all in it together. There's no airlock. Uh, on the on this space capsule. So once the hatch is open, you're all essentially in in the vacuum of space. And we all felt these same sensations. What was it like to look back at Earth? And does it make you more reflective? Absolutely. It, it, I don't know how it can't. The fact that we had such an intense schedule, there was moments that you would be scanning and you'd catch a glance of, of the Earth or a, a sunrise, the dawn, uh, a sunset, and it just, it's so mesmerizing. Gillis becoming the first person to play the violin in space. For me, it was such a special moment to see a wooden violin floating in a 21st century spacecraft. I think sharing the music of John Williams from the stars, there's no more perfect a message than that. How were, how were the acoustics up there? Really good. Awesome. Really? <laughs> <laughs> we had front row seats. The crew using every moment to push forward and learn including passing through the Van Allen radiation belt. There is a radiation belt that goes around our Earth. And so when we went to this higher altitude, we were getting much closer, really kissing the inner portion of that. And so what that means is that we, as well as our spacecraft, were exposed to higher radiation doses. We were taking all sorts of data to be able to learn more through science and research about the human response to that environment. So you got more than a few x-rays there we, in terms of ex <laughs> exposure. You've still got bandages on your, on your fingers. <laughs> You're still human guinea pigs at this point. Absolutely. We want to identify some of those challenges associated with long-duration spaceflight. Do you come back now with more questions, more things you want to know in, in future flights? You know, all of the, that question answering didn't stop when we splashed down. It is imperative that we learn as much as we can from all of this information to make future astronauts' lives better and enable that future where there are thousands of people living in space.